What's good? What's good? What's good? It's your boy Peter Lance coming to you with the morning vlog. Everything sounds good. Let me turn the mic down a little bit because I'm getting a little feedback. Testing, 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 testing. Better. It's a lot better. So I'm coming to you this afternoon. Sunday. Just got through finish. I had to make an appointment to go see Black Panther. And then I left everybody at the movie theaters. It's a beautiful movie theater in Brooklyn. A little bit past the Barclay Center. I don't know the name of it, but it's a nice movie theater. It's like a building, so it's like different floors. You know, they got the they got this new thing called um, I forgot what it's called, but it's like 3D. It's like 3D, HD, all of that, all of it down in, into one. You know, it's good. Maybe if I turn the speakers down a little bit. Getting a lot of feedback this morning. Hello. So, I just want to say that um, people who know me, they know I'm not, I used to be, but I, I'm not a person to um, to jump on hype, to jump on bandwagons. Me personally, I, I, I've been a, a comic book fan since I was a little boy, you know, most of us was, you know, I grew up in the early 90s to late 90s you know when it was my teenage years i was a teenager in the 90s so you know we had a lot of cartoons debut you know we had the spider-man cartoon that debuted they we had the um batman which came into robin you know we had the superman cartoon for a little while me personally i was big on collecting comic cards that was my thing i was a i was a big card collector when i was a kid basketball football baseball all of that but they came out with the the marvel comic cards it was nice to collect those so i'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to that you know I'm not a big TV fan watcher, but I have been um, watching the Marvel series that comes on Netflix, and they're they they all they all have been good, like great series. Like I was following the Daredevil, then they had Jessica Jones, you know, then they had the Punisher. Then they had Luke Cage too. So all three of those is just or all there's four of them. Yeah, four of them. Jessica Jones, The Punisher, Daredevil, and um Luke Cage. I love those. I love those. Absolutely love them. We got good storylines. It's a very well directed, produced. You know, it got it got like a touch of realness to it, you know, something that I think they haven't done since maybe like the first Batman. I'm thinking like to me, the first Batman. It's just my opinion. I think the first Batman was like. It's crazy because my friend, it was back in the day that came out in like in the 90s, like 1989. And my friend uh, 
sent me a message on Facebook and he said, I, he remember he got a beating because he stayed over at my house to watch it. And we, we had brought it on VHS back in the day. It's crazy, right? The things you remember. And I just told him like, you know, Miss Jesse don't play boys, so you should already know. But you know, back in the day, we were little kids, we used to take that risk. But anyway, I think what I was trying to say was, I think that to me, Batman one was like the only movie that that actually looked like it could have been real a little bit. Especially being though that you look at how things is going and you know how the um how we going through all of these terror attacks and stuff like that. So when you look at the things that was that was transpiring in a movie. It, it was it's almost like it could have been actually real. So when I watch these movies, I mean, when I watch these Netflix series, particularly the Marvel ones that I just named, um, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Punisher, and Luke Cage, they write them so good and they're so well produced. It's almost like these things can really be happening in real life, in real time. That's why I enjoy them so much. You know, you got a, a lot of the comic books and the movies. I'm not going to lie. Some of the Spider-Man movies was too, but some of them got a little bit too comic-y too, you know. But overall, I think the Marvel series on Netflix, is they, they, hitting, it. they hitting it right on the head. And I appreciate it. Once they come out, I don't waste no time. I watch the whole thing. Get it out the way. Actually, I think the um I gotta watch the new the new Jessica Jones just came out. So maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. I'll get into that. But we're gonna talk about Black Panther first. So the thing that I wanted to talk about though was basically about Black Panther, the culture, you know, everybody, it don't matter what color you was, because when I went to the movies, I seen just as many other people there other than, should I say, uh, color folk, you know, seen a lot of um, Caucasians, saw uh, some Asians, you know, it was, It was a nice little crowd out there yesterday morning. You know, we had to make an appointment. We've been trying to see it. So the first show that wasn't sold out, we had to actually went to go see it early in the morning, 10 o'clock. So that was good. We got up, you know what I mean? It was almost like going to church. You feel me? We had got up, got dressed, went to go hang out at the movie theaters, ate a little lunch. It's great. But I just want to say a couple things about Black Panther that I don't think people that that's 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 aware of because of the simple fact of what I said a few minutes ago is that we just jump we just jump on the fab you know what I'm saying any fab that come out we jump on it and um I think that's a I think that's a good thing sometimes but I think sometimes we need to sit down and personally research these things that we we find ourselves so interested in you know what i'm saying and i don't think enough people does that uh, for instance i i had a conversation with a lady on facebook where she was being funny praying asking jesus to bless the, the warriors of, of wakanda and all of that other stuff like and um she got she got a pretty good response from her little Facebook following, but I had to tell her like you can't you cannot call yourself a real Christian and be a fan of the people of Wakanda. You can't. Because if you do the research, Wakanda, which is a fictional place, might I add, it's not a real place. 
But if you do the math of Wakanda, the first thing that you will learn is that Wakanda was the only place in Africa that was not ran by the rulers. The actual people, the indigenous people of Wakanda is the people of Wakanda. They have no outside influences and that include Christianity and Muslim Islamic beliefs. Okay. No French, no British, no Greek, nothing has ever conquered Wakanda. And this is why this is what made Wakanda so special is because it was untouched. Okay. So for you Christians to come out and show so much support, so 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 show so much support for Black Panther, that goes to show me how much you really and truly care about your savior. Okay. If you watched the movie, I watched the movie yesterday, but I already knew the story. If you watched the movie, you would have already known that when anytime they was trying to when when the part when they was talking about they wanted to uh they wanted to uh provide aid and help for other people it wasn't that they didn't want to do it it just was because they they knew what was going to be the consequences for helping other people who had different beliefs it wasn't about helping people it's about keeping what you got pure okay that's just like saying if you love somebody but you know they got hiv you're not gonna just willingly lay with them knowing that it'd be toxic for you despite your love for this person you have to almost sit back and be like you know what i love you but you know what i'm saying like you i don't i don't want to i don't want to put this toxic this, this disease in my body just for the love just for love hope that makes sense but that's just how i see it like So I just wanted to point that out. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that the reason why I fell back off of Christianity and they and they always say that, oh, people are not perfect and we all fall short. Yeah, that's all well and good. But at the same time, like when is people as people as Christians going to say enough is enough and live by that book like all the rest of the religions do? You don't see Muslims get on TV and poke fun at Allah. You never see it. You never will see it. That's because the people of Islamic belief, they take they they take they savior serious. You don't see no Muslim movies of no uh 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 uh, uh you don't see no uh Islamic movies or people of uh Muslim belief making movies about a man dressing up as an old lady preaching and cussing at the same time you know i mean like us us black christians man we got it twisted in this world man run for anything go run behind anything they use anything sports i didn't see pastors talk about some super bowl i don't i don't i don't been to church man y'all i don't been to church and i didn't seen preachers physically quote rappers lyrics on the pulpit yeah i have they do the name nay all of that but i guess because they do it in jesus name is okay right i'm not gonna get on y'all that much today like i said i deal with the cosmos but i encourage anybody who haven't seen black panther to go and see it you know what i'm saying i ain't trying to tear you down because at the end of the day of christianity makes you a better person than God bless you at the end of the day, though. But don't come to me and tell me I'm going to hell because I don't pray to your God or I don't pray to your Savior. Because it just sounds stupid. You don't even take your Savior that serious. Everything that's in that Bible is what I learned was it's cosmicology. It's cosmicology. What that being mean is they took all the books from ancient times and, and, and reworded it for the power of other person these religions is based upon 
putting holding somebody else in a higher esteem it's not about the man it's not it's never been about the man it always been about fear constantly having fear that if you do wrong you're going to die and 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 eternally be in an eternal health for the rest of your life like that's what made me turn into a christian i didn't want to go to hell i didn't want to burn in hell fire for the rest of my life or for the rest of my the rest of my soul's existence you know how much that is that's forever so they're saying that you're gonna burn forever you feel me i live 38 48 58 62 years and then the rest of my life i gotta live in hell fire scary but it's not true but like i said that was just a little message i wanted to see like i need christians if if you this is the whole thing about christians if you want people to take you serious you want to you need to take your religion serious your religion is serious you feel me stop justifying stuff because when i came to that lady you know what she said she said oh god made it made god made a season for all things even laughter but that's not in the Bible. You put that extra part in the Bible. Yeah, he got seasons for everything, but he didn't, he wasn't talking about seasons like that. You feel what I'm saying? And that's another thing that I hate that Christians do, particularly Christian women. They make excuses for everything. They need to stop that. You can't, if you're going, either you're going, either you're going to live by that book or you're not. Either you're going to learn your history or you're going to die dumb. It's that easy. You can't claim that you you can't claim that you you want to know God and you and, and you want to be this person of integrity, but you're not even you're not even living through yourself. You're living through somebody else that's supposed to have lived almost two thousand years ago. How you do that? Y'all waiting for him to come back for what? What is he gonna do when he come back? He gonna take y'all and leave everybody else here? I can't wait till he come back so he can take y'all and then maybe we can start really moving ahead in life. Because the same thing with the Black Panther movie is the same thing with church. All of our black dollars was getting pushed into this, pushed into that movie, pushed into church, and there ain't none of that money coming back. Okay, y'all be putting up little food pantries and stuff like that, but y'all not really doing nothing for the community. But sucking the resources out of it. Preacher is preacher is well off. First lady well off. They taking in donations to pay the pay they pay their guest speakers and all of this other stuff. Like, like come on, like it's in, it's about entertainment. Is they no different than rappers? They no different than pimps. I done been to church when they told people like, yo, we need a hundred dollars. We need nine people with a hundred dollars. And they, and the people run to get them the money. Okay. We need 20 people with $50. Okay. We need 30 people with $25. Like they'll break it all the way down. So they get every fucking pocket, every fucking dime out of your pocket before you leave that church, bro. Pay to pray. Sowing seeds and all of this other stuff. Come on, man. That's that, that don't have man. That don't got nothing to do with the creator. It don't got nothing to do with even even if in the book of Jesus. Jesus didn't. Jesus was telling y'all that this ain't the way we praise God, but y'all still doing it though. Ain't that what got him killed? If Jesus did come back today, he wouldn't fuck with none of y'all. I guarantee you, he would. <laughs> When I was married, my wife was in church. When I was married, man, and um, we was in the church or whatever. We was going to the church. The pastor who, the pastor who um, who married us or whatever. Yo, my wife always was getting into it with somebody about something. You feel me? They couldn't even put programs together without people egos getting involved and people 
people um backing out at the last minute and doing all types of stuff like it's all about being a part of something and when I'm and when I'm and the way out the way my body and my, my life is set up now I'm not being a part of nothing but me you feel what I'm saying if it's not the betterment of my soul my being my health my wealth then why why should I pay attention you know because at the same time that my wife was claiming to be so in the church you know what else she was in into reality tv love and hip-hop black ink all of that dumb stuff but you a christian though power and all of these movies that all of these things that 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 distracts us from what the what is really going on in the world that's all it is is a major big distraction so yeah i'm i'm definitely i definitely was feeling wakanda you feel me <clears throat> particularly the part when my gorgeous sister had to dress up she had to put that wig on and she was walking through and she was like yo i feel disgusting with this wig on my fucking head yo you feel me the other one was like yo you only gotta wear it for a little while just just stay cool it's gonna be all right you know what i'm saying and that was like a small message of how we how we push self-hatred on each other you feel me like you got one person saying that they that they don't want to wear no wig they feel uncomfortable with the wig and then you got another person on the other side telling them like girl get out of here it's, it's okay you ain't gotta wear it just before a little while like no like that's what it's supposed to be you're supposed to be uncomfortable because i know damn well if i go outside right now with some boots on what what if i put on some boots that make me look like two or three inches tall and i'm walking through the city and i feel uncomfortable as hell walking like that just just to try to cover up my insecurities of being short or i put up wow well, you see how you see my hairline is getting thin i walk around with fucking magic marker across my fucking forehead just to just to just to cover up the insecurities of going ball it's a part of life i accept it come on man still handsome you ain't gotta tell me that my mother died telling me i was handsome every day that's the only thing i need to do i don't need it i don't need to to fuel my uh insecurities what what people you know what i mean what, what, how people feel how people think you feel me because i think that beauty is is in here is in here you know what i'm saying it's more it's way it's way i used to be a dude that 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 liked it to be neat and clean and and walk around with the cleanest sneakers on and my little gold chain and all of that stuff but i don't care about that stuff no more because i see it it brings the wrong attention it's the wrong attention the attention that you need to that you should want to get is the attention of being a real stand-up person being a person that's being like yo you know my man peter lance he knowledgeable about that once you go holler at him or you know my man peter lance like he down for the cause once you go holler at him it's, it's it's to the point now where anything anything that's 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 right is looked at as being wrong you know what i'm saying all the people that i deal with they don't watch my videos they don't watch my videos you feel me but they sitting around supporting somebody else that they that won't that's not even going to make it to their funeral now what's like like what's the madness in that you feel me because if you know me you know i'll try to make all the funerals not because i want to award for it and nothing like that but it's just my personal thing i'm going to pay my respects i'm going to make sure i try to pay my respects to everybody do i make all i don't make all of them but i try my best to try my best to make all of them because at the end of the day i see how people is now i see how people is man people won't even take time out of their day to go say goodbye to somebody that they ain't never gonna see again and that's the, that's just the selfishness that's being bred inside us black panther that shit was good bro but i need y'all christians to realize one thing stop doing that man stop doing that Stop riding the fence. 
if you if you if you if you if you a born again christian saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost and all that other crap how in the hell is you gonna go to a movie represent that movie without knowing none of the history and that's exactly what y'all do with your own religion that's how I, that's how i know i cannot take y'all serious because like i said if you ever looked up wakanda in the origin of that it'll tell you it was the only place in africa that was not ruled by outside intruders the british and the french or no and, and or no religious influences no religious influences when you watch the movie everything they every time they gave praise they gave praise to who the ancestors son the ancestors that's the people that came before them and that's what life is about life is about giving props to the people that came before you the people that had to make the sacrifice to make sure that you're here today. So you can go ahead and keep on quoting John 16, John 3, 16, all you want to. That, that shit is, is false. God gave his only begotten son. We all are his kids. So he only gave up one, his only one. But they, they, they say we all are his children. We all are children to God. We are all God children. But he gave up only one of his, he gave up his only son. That's what it says. So he only had one child. You feel me? The Bible is contradicted. We all children and we all children in the eye of the Lord. But he only had one son. His only son. Come on, man. Let's move right along, man on another piece because last last night we watched that fight and that was a great fight man we're talking about first i want to talk about the first fight and i guess it was um the first fight that came on was oh his, i think his name was Darrell, Darrell something and the other dude i can't figure his name his name was jose usgastiki yeah usgastiki and um this is the this is a rematch and um i think i think us gostiki got uh disqualified in the first match so this was the second match you know he put the mittens on this kid son you hear me the mittens and it was crazy because he was beating him up so bad really that um the eighth round came his corner was like the rail corner was like yo we're gonna um we gonna um what do you say? Oh, he's like, yo, we gonna we gonna stop the fight, man. If you can't you can't you can't like you need a knockout, we're gonna stop the fight. This is the last round, man. If you can't do nothing. So he was like, yo, you know what? I didn't hear it, but you could tell this was being said in the corner. He said, yo, we gonna quit but after you quit i'm gonna act surprised yo he said it you could tell him he kept asking do you want to fight do you want to continue he was like nah because i think he might have hurt his hand i think he might have hurt his hand because he kept going like this like his hand hurt but i ain't gonna lie like it was a, it was a, um like the the, the uh, round before i'll say about the sixth round he was hitting them with some hard shots but this dude, Jose Gostigi, man, he just kept coming, man. He just kept coming, bro. Like, he was hitting him with some bangers, like, boom, boom. Right hand was coming over the top. But he just kept coming, like, he just kept coming, like. And um, one of them shots, he hit him with, he hit him, he hit him, he, like, he hit him with all his might, son. And he still kept coming. And after he hit him, he started shaking his hand a little bit like maybe he fucking you know what i mean maybe he made him jammed his wrists up punching or whatever so i don't know but it was a great fight it's a great fight especially 
building up to the Wilder Ortiz fight. So the Wilder Ortiz fight, though, I'm going to just let you know, I love Dante Wilder. Don't get me wrong. I love Dante Wilder because his personality, I don't think his personality is cocky. I think his personality is like being true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he I feel like he's a person that's true to himself and I feel like he believes in his capabilities. And he also know that he's a raggedy fighter. He knows he's a raggedy fighter, but he he's a he got a late start. He didn't have no amateur career, you know what I'm saying? And um I like his attitude as far as like he want to fight everybody, any and everybody. Like, if you don't think I'm the best, show me who the best, and I'll fight that. I'll fight him. You got to show me. Like, he's the type of person is, he don't care what nobody else say. You, Y'all got to prove it to him. You feel me? And that's why I like that. It ain't about, he, he got to prove anything to us. You feel me? And he respect his fans, and he love and he love his black people. And I, not, and I love that about him, is that every time you watch some of his his uh his uh his post fight his his post fight uh conferences and um press conferences and stuff like that you always hear him say like man we need to we need to stop hating each other we need to stop uh being so uh petty and re revengeful to each other we need to really just start working together and owning this i remember i was watching one uh press conference yo he was big enough black people he was like yo my black people is the best people in this world bro we could do anything but the only thing we doing is going out our way to put to keep each other down and when i heard him say that i'm like yo and he do and he was like yo i don't worry about what nobody else says like i i, I try to keep control of my own emotions and he's like yo i learned how to do that too yoga and meditation and that's what that's what i do too and that's when i and that's how i could tell exactly what he's saying is actual facts you have to get to a point where you control in your emotions you feel me because once you control your emotions you could be control your behavior once you could control your behavior you can make all awesome decisions you feel me all your decisions will be for the better you feel me you're not all, you're not you're not living off of intentions you feel me because a lot of us got good intentions but we're not doing the right thing to meet them intentions you feel me like i can my intentions could be good i could just want to go and just go steal like five apples because i got these babies in here crying they hungry you know what i'm saying i can go steal five apples my intentions would be good because i'm trying to feed my family but the actions is wrong because if i get caught i'm gonna have to answer for that you feel what i'm saying and even though my intentions was good i ain't gonna be able to go to the judge and be like judge I only stole these apples because I had five crying babies in there. You know what they're going to do? He's still going to penalize me for whatever it is that I did. He's not going to give me no check. He's not going to give me no voucher. He's not going to do nothing. He's going to deal with me accordingly. So with that being said, is it's always a different way. It's always a better way. That's, that's why we got to keep calm, cool, and collective. And make better wiser decisions come on man so that way when we ever find out we're never we're trying not to ever find ourselves in that position again you feel what i'm saying there's no reason for us to keep going through the same different things in life you feel what i'm saying when you keep doing the same thing over and over again that's what i did i had to stop doing the same thing over and over again and start doing things to build up a platform that you know what i'm saying like it's like building an engine so once you get this engine together and it's running it's it's running you feel me so whenever a little thing that come that get into your machine and jam your machine up it'll just be a little pull it out a little spray a little oil on it to keep it lubricated and that's it and you keep in the shit keep going again you feel me the obstacles that we go through is not we gotta motherfucking tackle them when it's time to tackle them don't 
procrastinate on them or nothing. Just get it done. Just get her done. I learned a lot, man. You feel me? Because I've been through a lot. But, yo, talking about this fight, man. Yo, that that was it was it was good in the beginning, you know. It was um it was a good fight, man. Cause Ortiz had a good game plan. What well, seemed to be a good game plan. He had a good game plan. You know what I'm saying? He was he was fighting. He was fighting. He was fighting unorthodox, but he kept moving. He kept moving around um, Dante's right hand because he knew that's the only thing he had. And it was like at one point of the fight, like Dante landed a right, a nice right hand. I'm thinking it was around about the third round, the third round maybe, and dropped him. Dropped him, son. One, two, bang. And when he hit him, bang. It was like a delayed reaction. Like he caught him good, son. But he got up and when he got up he went back to his plan and his plan seemed like it was working and he even had dante wilder hurt for a while but dante wilder he ain't this he he ain't he ain't he ain't give him credit but yo he hurt that nigga because he was running and then they gave him a little bit of more time after the thing like I don't know what we're going on though. Because he had him fucked. He had him fucked up. Hit him with a mean short ass right hand. Yo, he hit him so hard and so fast. Yo, he hit Dante so hard and so fast, man. I'm thinking this is about like the sixth round. Yo, he hit him with the right hand. They was like what I call in the phone booth. I call it in the phone booth when they heads together. You feel me? They heads together. They throwing little body shots. <laughs> you feel me? Dante tried to throw some wild shit, right? He leaned back and threw the jab, through the left uppercut. But Dante did like this too. But when as Dante ducked, dipped and was coming back in, yo, he hit him with the, he hit him with a quick ass short right hand, bang. Got him on his pedal bike. He was backing up. Then he then he hit him. Was hitting him with some nice right hands, like boom, bio, boom, bio. And then Dante still in fall though, but the nigga was trying to hold him the whole time. So he was trying to, yo, he was fucking him up for like the whole, like for like the whole, for like the whole half of the sixth round, like at least a minute and thirty seconds of the sixth round. It may be the fifth, sixth, some one of them rounds. It wasn't too late, but it was like in the middle. It was after he got knocked down and got back up, though. Yo, he was fucking him up for like a minute and a half, yo. And um, Dante was trying to hold him and was running, and he made it out the round. So in the beginning of the next round, when they ring the bell, you could tell Dante Wilder still fucked up. But the referee did some dumb shit. He was like, he, he he stopped the fight and told niggas to go back to their corner for I don't know what the fuck it was for though. I ain't seen no water on the floor. They ain't wipe up no water. They both had their mouthpiece in their mouth. Like I don't know what the fuck he stopped the fight for. But then he made him fight, and then he still had him for a little while. But slowly but surely he was hanging in there, yo. Slowly but surely he got his head back. I get because I like I said, man, he knocked them the fuck out. Soon as he, but that's that, that's his thing though. Soon as he got you hurt though, that's the whole thing about Dante Wilder though, is that soon as he got you hurt, he gonna go on that wild man shit. Gonna go on that wild man shit. He mastered that wild man shit. He gonna go on that wild man shit. We throw a bunch of like. <laughs> I'll be like, yo. Cause once he had him fucked up, that's exactly what he did. He hit him with another right hand. The same thing that he did to him had him fucked up. But instead of finishing him, he did what he was supposed to do. He finished him. 
You feel me? Ortiz was supposed to have to finish him, God. You feel me? He definitely did a good job of motherfucking taking the punishment. And he was and he was lighting the ass. Like Dante Wilder was only came in a he only came in at like 300, like 300, like 312 pounds. I mean, I said 300, uh, 212 pounds. For real. They ain't shit, 212? And he tall as hell. He was in, the, he was looking skinny as hell in that ring yet last, uh, last night. Skinny as hell. Two, 214. He like six. I don't know. He like six seven, six six, two fourteen. That boy was skinny as hell. Any nigga that's that tall gonna be two hundred pounds, cause just just cause you tall as hell. Like, shit. I'm on. I'm at motherfucking like one ninety eight, like one one ninety one ninety eight. You feel me? Cause I, I don't eat nothing but vegetables, but it seemed like since I ate vegetables, like I'm not even big, but solid. I don't do it. All I do is eat vegetables. Now I eat meat every so often, but more and more I'm getting it out of my diet. Cause I know that ain't what we supposed to be doing, man. You feel me? I'll be substituting this shit, dog. I'll be eating tuna fish and shit, but I ain't, I don't want to stop doing that too. Feel me? Tuna fish and salmon and shit. Because the thing that I know is in the beginning, It was always nothing but plant eaters, man. You feel me? It was plants for two things. It was plants that was poisonous, at a, but it was a it was a meaning or a reason for it. You feel me? Sometimes. The way nature works, we don't got the answers to it, though. You feel what I'm saying? But one thing that I do learn and that I do know is that you can't go against nature, man. I don't care what it is. Your belief, your religion, you feel me? Your interest, your intelligence. I don't care what it is. You can name things on forever. You cannot put that against nature, man. Can't. The only thing that we can really do is compare things to us or animals. But when it comes to nature, you can't deal with it. You can't deal with it. Nature may, may, makes it possible for us to even be able to even consider going against nature. You feel what I'm saying now? Cause now everything is about going against nature. They wanna they wanna make they they are are fit fish insemination. They got greenhouses. They got all of these things. They got ways where they making plants with no soil. You all of these things that they're trying to do. They try to be better or be more advanced in nature. But all of you doing is you're deteriorating nature. And if we deteriorate nature, listen, they always talking about the world going to come to an end. It's never going to come to an end. The only thing that's going to happen is we just going to suck the planet dry of all this fucking resources, son. That's it. That's how we going to die off by killing each other and sucking the planet dry of all these resources. You feel me? And then while we dead, is nature going to have to start all over again on its own. You know what I'm saying? That's it. This shit been here. This shit always gonna be here. You ain't never going nowhere. You feel me? It's not.
that's the sad part about it. I'm about to give up all of this stuff and become like a motherfucking guru or something. But I got to get myself together because once I become a guru, I don't want nobody to bother me. I'm going to just... I'm going to just go and drop jewels and keep it moving. You feel me? Cause that's the way that's the way it's supposed to be. Like in 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 a, in a perfect world, you'll want the people you love around you, but at the end of the day, if they're not ready and they're not right, then you got to you got to keep moving, man. You feel me? And just like anybody else, I make, I justify it for the things that I do. But the only things that I do, I'm only doing them to myself though now. You feel me? Like, I'll smoke a cigarette. You feel me? When I drink a beer, something like that. But I'm trying not to have no vices. I already changed my, I'm already changing my diet. You feel me? God, you got to stop. What things one at a time you feel me you can't overload this shit but at the same time that's just another excuse because if i wanted to i'm supposed to be able to and that's why meditation is so important but every time i smoke one and i drag it real hard that shit just make me feel like i'm fucking busting my fucking heart open I hate them shits but as soon as i ain't smoking it be something in me that be like, man, you smoke a cigarette. Mm-hmm. Just be beat, be tired, with nothing to do. Feel me? That's the first thing that happened when you ain't doing nothing. Like you sitting down, you ain't doing nothing. You want to be distracted somehow. You want to be feeling like you, you fueling your body with some type of, some type of chemical right, that make you feel either down up fast slow make you feel however you want to feel like you wake up in the morning you'll drink a cup of coffee just to get your little kick start feel me that's how life is but i'm gonna really work to the point where i only just do nothing but just drink Fucking filter water. And maybe coffee and tea. You know what I mean? That's it. I like beer, but I only like beer that tastes like it's beer. You feel know I me? Mean? That's why I drink this. I drink bush. It's by Budweiser, but it just it tastes like beer. You know I me? Mean? It don't got that much alcohol in this can. Like you be seeing some of them cans, they be having like five point something. This shit only got three point three alcohol in it. You know what I mean? It's bush, baby. They say beer good for you, but that's another excuse, man. You supposed to just be off of just straight. Power launch, but yo, I wanted to bring a better presentation to y'all, but share this today. So I don't know what's wrong with this shit. Like I push the sh- sh- the share screen button. Feel me? I got windows open down at the bottom, so it ain't work today. Hope. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. I hope y'all enjoyed chilling with your boy Peter Lance this morning. I mean, it's 9.32. Got something to do. I'll see y'all.